Okay, here I am. Um, I uh, This is Jeannie, and um, I'm continuing to talk a little bit about backgrounds and um, how to support a center of interest. And for a lot of you who have asked how I do these little dots in the background. So um, I did this, I started this painting a long time ago. Actually, it was, um, it was for a class. And so it's just sat around and I thought, I would pull it out and just use it as, for demonstration purposes for you guys. It's already got a start to, um, to the background. And also I can show you a little bit about um, adding to the rows and things like that. We'll talk a little bit about lighting and, um, and that in this video. But mostly I want to talk to you about backgrounds and how to get those translucent colors and the little dots in the background. Um, and as I said in my earlier video, it's important to have a photograph, or at least it helps a lot to have a photograph with that out of focus um, background. So you want a um, that um, when you use your camera, I have to figure this out how to tell you guys how to use your camera to get those so it really helps you. But it's, it uh, is a narrow depth of field, I think. Now, some of you are photographers, so you know, and you could probably tell me more about that. Um, at any rate, um, let's, let's get into this and, um, and we'll get more into photo photographing in a little bit later uh, video, maybe next one. I'll research it a little bit for you. So um, over here on my palette, I've got my, my favorite three colors and I'm just gonna use those to start with, um, maybe for the whole demo, just to keep it simple and because I love it so much and uh, as you guys are probably getting to know. So here we have, um, let's see if I can move that up a little bit. I hope that's showing up to you guys. I'm actually going to change the lighting in here just a little bit. Um, sort of a gray uh, up there in that top corner. And that is made mostly with my blue and my rose. So it's um, Windsor, oh, there we go. That's better. Windsor blue, green shade, permanent rose, and then a little bit of yellow. And I think I just splashed my water everywhere. Okay. It's been so long since I've done a video for you guys. I feel like I'm starting from scratch, starting all over again. Here's our blue. I've got my, um, my paper up on a slant. Again, as uh, you've probably seen with some, if you've watched any of my other videos, or taken a class with me. Um, you know how I like to put my um, paper up on a slant. And so I'm just bringing in sort of some watery um, color. And um, I'll just get, I'm gonna go over those little circles that I've already created. I'm going to bring in a little bit of yellow over in here. That is a little bit of yellow. I need a little more pigment. There we go. Got some pigment. It's all juicy and watery. We're just going to let those colors mingle together. And you might be able to tell on the camera that um, I'm not coming up all the way to the edge of my um, area up in here. Um, that's a reflection in the window. 
And so I'm keeping that kind of um, hmm, uh, I don't know what to call that. Uh, not a uh, not a hard well it's a hard edge, but it's um, it's I'm not coming up with my next layer of color right up to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit. But here where I have the flower itself, not the reflection, I'm going to come right up tight up against that with my next layer of color. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I'll try to find a better way of explaining that. Now at this point, you can, I'll put my photo over there, you can tip your paper if you like and that helps the colors mingle together a little bit more and I, I do that sometimes and it also helps kind of um, um, gosh I can't speak today <laughs> um, it helps to um, even out the amount of water everywhere so it's equally wet not too dry I'm going to come right up to the top here and hopefully I'm hoping you can see that come right up to the top and I'm doing a little circular motion light pressure and then I've got some permanent rows on my brush and I'm just going to come up into my wet paint so the paint's still very wet and I'm going to add a little bit to this yellowish or greenish area I'm also going to bring put a little bit of yellow on my brush Make some little circular shapes in here so you can add color to your damp wash. You can also dry your brush. So I'm using my paper towel, just drying my brush off, and then I'm going to come with a circular motion here. The more water you have on your brush, the more the water is going to push out and you can um, get little pushes, little blossoms, or backwashes. So it's just kind of, I'm going to fool around with this a little bit. The, the, um, the thing I'm always um, watching for is that I don't want it to be too dotty, too like dots, um, like polka dots. I want it to have um, a kind of a nice rhythm back there uh, and a nice um, flow of um, light spots. But this feels a little bit too dotty to me. So before it dries, what I just want to do is I'm just going to go back in with some blue and touch it over some of that area because I don't like the way it's looking. So you can see how I can I can just manipulate that a little bit. If it starts to dry too much it won't work as nicely as it's doing right now but um, Uh, if it's still nice and wet, you can come back in there. I don't know. Ah. <laughs> I might have to start this video all over again. Let's let that sit. Let's come down here. This is sometimes when I'm uh, teaching my classes, I have to have a warm warm up period. This may be what this video is. A warm-up period for the teacher. I'm going to come right over this area. Hopefully you can see the photograph too as I'm working. And 
and um, f kind of follow along. I wonder if if you guys like to watch um, videos or if you paint while you're watching videos. Sometimes I do that. I like to. Um, it's like a little, a, like somebody being with me while I'm painting. I think one of the hardest things about being an artist is that when you're doing your work, you're isolated. Any of you feel like that yourselves? That's one of the nice things about taking a class, too, is that... Um, in a class you can paint, but you're, um, but you're not isolated. You're with other people. That's always fun. I like this so much better than that, you guys. I feel so much happier with this part. I like this, um, this blue, green, violet, and orange. I just, I love those transitions. One of the nice things you can do with backgrounds too, which I love to do, is bring in your foreground, or let your foreground and your background mingle together. This only works if uh, if this area is dark um, and you want to keep it fairly dark, this, on my photograph you maybe can see how dark this petal is. This is right in here. And so um, by coming over the top of that, <clears throat> I let those two areas mingle together. I also darken the value of my foreground, which it needed to be darkened anyway. You can also, um, if you like using masking fluid, you can use masking fluid in your background if you like this dotty um, background, and you can um, or you can just um, come in and do a little bit of negative painting. So by just coming around, not painting that area, leaving that dry, leaving that dry. If you need to stop, the way I do it is I just take a clean, damp brush and I just run it along the bottom part of that and, uh, and just soften those two areas and then I can come back in and continue to work. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to bring a little bit of yellow or lift a little bit of color out of this area. Give some uh, highlights, even though that area is very dark, it does have some little touches of light in there. And then I'm also going to come in back up here where I started at the very beginning. And I'm going to bring in some uh, or lift out some pigment. My paper is still damp and so that allows me to come in and bring in some some light areas back. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I just added a little bit of yellow to that. Isn't that pretty? I hopefully I hope you can you can see I'll, I won't know until I take a look at the video if this is gonna work well enough but there's lots of areas to show you so if this doesn't quite work 
Um, I'll just redo it in another area. Let me show you what I've got so far. See this, how pretty this is. Just love that. And I like that a lot better. See how it's not so polka dotty? Those random dots are what's important. Uh, keeping those, those dots random. Now, I want to show you, let's see if I can move this over. Hold on. Move this over a little bit and show you here what I've done over here. I'm painting negatively in these areas and I'm adding, so each time I add a little bit more pigment, I pull out. So there's a line here where I stopped, I was painting negatively, and then there's a line here. That's another layer. So that's one, two, three, at least three layers of pigment. Here's one, two, three, four. So I, I love those little uh, rings. Look at here, I've made a little heart. Ha, <laughs> cute. Okay, so let me show you how I do that. Compared to what I was doing over here. So let's bring in some clear water. Clear water here. Start with a little ring around that dot. And then bring in some color and I'm going to so it's it's a matter of coming tight up to the edge right up to the edge of that petal in some places bringing my color down tight up to the edge of the face changing color. So that was the Windsor Blue Green Shade, Permanent Rose. Negative Painting. Permanent Rose. Bringing the Permanent Rose and the Windsor Blue together creates a, a violet. It's not a real clean violet, it's kind of a little bit of a muddy violet. Right up to the edge here of the petal, touch up, right up against that edge. But here, I'm just going to come out a little bit from the edge of that circle or dot. Right up here, pulling out here, down here, let's bring a little yellow, a little yellow in here, and then we'll pull it down, let's bring a little more yellow into this, look at that beautiful color, oh, oh. I just don't need much to make me happy. Just these three colors in layers. And I'm, I'm a happy girl. I just love the way that um, they um, glow through. They're so transparent and they just glow through. Each layer enhances the last layer. And by leaving these little cute little edges of pigment in each layer. People can come up close if they want to. I don't know if they ever do, but um, they can come up close and look at those little little edges and they can count how many layers I painted. And I like that even even if nobody ever does that. I like that idea of my process is evident 
uh, in, in the finished painting. A little heavier in the pigment here. Add a little more pigment there. Just drop in a little bit there. You can get a little bit looser. Just bring some of that rose in here and kind of connect it down so it's kind of coming through that area. I love that. Love it. And Let's just bring this right down. I'm going to touch in a little bit of yellow over in here. Come right up to the edge of the windowsill. Nice hard line. Let's see. Well, I'm liking this right in here, that blue. I'm going to move that through and down to the yellowy green. Um, now I can come back in. As it, so what you want to watch for is so down here the paint is still really shiny and wet, but up in this area the paint the paint and water have started to soak into the paper and so it's matte, not shiny. And so I can come back in and I'm switching brushes. For those of you that have followed my videos, you know I love these Robert Simmons White Sables. This one is a um, number six and it's got, it's worn down so it's a used, well used brush. And I love these more used brushes for doing some of these little um, light spots, these little little dappled light spots. Uh, <clears throat> let's bring a little more light in here. You don't have to always do circles. You can run a little bit of water down to create some different kind of shape back in there. I'm not coming up with that out of my own brain. I'm seeing a suggestion of that in my photo. So um, I, even though I'm not going to follow the photo exactly, I'm taking little hints from the photo. And uh, I find that works really, really good for me. And my, my heart's pretty... Uh, obvious here while the paint is still damp. That little heart. Um, we'll see. I'm going to leave it for now, but maybe as I get further into the painting I'll, I'll change that up. We'll see. See what it looks like. Um, I think that's enough for right now. I'm going to come back and continue to work on this. I'll do um, several installations of this type of video working on the background and showing you how I layer and how I do those little out of focus um, circles and in continuing uh, layers. I also want to work on this and show you some things about that which isn't background but what the heck we'll add it into our background videos. Thank you so much for watching um, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad to hear that the videos are inspiring and helpful to some of you. Um, 
just uh, you can't imagine that just makes me feel so good and uh, I hope you'll continue to watch and then if you haven't subscribed to my channel uh, I hope you will and that way you'll be notified when my oh I think you have to click that little bell you'll be notified when I post a new video which hopefully will be more often than it has been okay thank you very much and I'll see you all in my next video